Okay, scary stuff to say the least. And Gordon Chang is standing by to talk about whether or not China is actually bluffing. But we begin here in Washington with our own DC Bureau's News Nation, Kelly Meyer. Kelly, thanks for joining us. Uh, so, Kelly, I know you've been talking to the White House, you've been listening to Pentagon briefings, talking to your sources there as well. How is the Pentagon preparing to protect the speaker on this trip? Well, hey, Vic, thanks for having me. We know the Pentagon chief, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, spoke with Nancy Pelosi ahead of this potential trip to Taiwan, giving her a security assessment. The White House, the National Security Council, doing the same, saying this is routine. This is something that they would do for any member of Congress, member of the cabinet, vice president or president going overseas. They would give them guidance and advice heading over there. We also know she's traveling on a military aircraft, though they wouldn't comment on where she is stopping. The White House can continues to say that this is all hypothetical. Vic? Thanks, Kelly, very much for your reporting today and all week on this issue. And we should note that every time a congressman, a congressional delegation, a CODEL in U.S. in Washington speak, travels overseas, it is aboard a military jet. They leave out a joint base, Andrews. Okay, Gordon Chang. Chang is with us now. He has an uncanny ability to understand China and its communist leaders. He's the author of The Great U.S.-China Tech War and the coming collapse of China, and he joins us now. Gordon, uh, thank you for being with us. How seriously, let's just get right to it, how seriously should we take this threat to shoot down Nancy Pelosi's plane? I, I think this is a serious threat. You know, it would seem inconceivable, um, but the problem is that Xi Jinping can take us by surprise. He's much more aggressive than we've ever thought, and so we shouldn't put this past him. And we've got to remember that China understands the stakes here, and so should we. And if Speaker Pelosi doesn't go, what she'll be doing is she'll be emboldening and legitimizing the worst elements in the Chinese political system by showing everybody else that uh, intimidation works, which means that we yeah. would be starting an extremely dangerous dynamic. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, at this point, the U.S. does seem to be boxed in. You can't back down now. OK, so we ha have we taken our eye off the ball with China? You know, for for several years now, administrations have said we're going to refocus the pivot. Of course, we've heard towards East Asia. China has been moving towards taking over Taiwan for decades. And it's clear the U.S. is tied up with the war in Ukraine. Should policymakers reframe this now and put their eye on the ball and focus on Taiwan? Yes, they absolutely should. Taiwan is uh, critical to our defense. It is at the center of our Western defense perimeter in East Asia. It is a democracy at a time when China is actually threatening democracies. And after the debacles in Afghanistan and Ukraine, it has become the key test around the world, the key test of American credibility. OK, I want to read you a tweet from a, a former Pentagon official. Uh, from, his name is Elbr Elbridge Colby. It caught my eye this morning. He writes, it's, it's entirely possible that Beijing won't pull the trigger, uh, for instance, because it's too nervous about the macroeconomic implications. But I don't have confidence in that. I think it's extraordinarily imprudent to rely on such restraint from Xi Jinping, as you were just saying, and the PRC. So I guess the question is, the U.S. is the, is the largest trading partner of China. They, China depends on the U.S. market. These are the two largest economies in the world, two of the top three militaries in the world. Could China risk economic collapse by doing this? You normally would think that they wouldn't, but uh, we got to remember that the problems inside China right now are severe. And Xi Jinping needs a crisis to divert the attention of the Chinese people. Um, today, he is actually provoking a crisis in Japanese waters that he's sent four warships into the territorial seas of Japan. Um, he's been uh, provoking a crisis in Second Thomas Shoal for the last five or six weeks. And his troops are deep into Indian-controlled territory in Ladakh and the Himalayas as we speak. Mm -hmm. So Xi Jinping's going to do something. We just don't know where. OK, bottom line question. The U.S. has 30,000 troops in Japan, including in Okinawa nearby, in South Korea, another 40,000. Can the U.S. face down China militarily? Yes, we can. We've got the power to do it. The only issue is, do we have the political will to do it? And Xi Jinping is banking on a weak Biden administration, one that it believes is in disarray. And so, therefore, the issue is not military strength so much in my mind, but is the political will of the two leaders. OK, Gordon Chang, thanks very much for your insight. Tense times here in East Asia and in Washington as Nancy Pelosi heads in that direction towards East Asia.
Okay, and as she does make that trip, Democrats and Republicans alike here in Washington are forced to choose sides, either support the speaker's desire to visit Taiwan or defend China's wish to keep the U.S. out. It's a tough choice. The list of Republicans who are saying she should go getting longer every day. We've heard from Newt Gingrich, Mike Pompeo, the former Secretary of State under Donald Trump, Senator Ben Sass, the Nebraska Republican, Mark Esper, the Secretary of Defense under Donald Trump, and John Bolton. We all know who he is. They all say the U.S. shouldn't knuckle under in the face of these Chinese threats. So let's bring in our friend from the Hill, our partner from the Hill, Niall Stanage. Always great to see you, Niall. He's the White House columnist. Uh, over down there on K Street, where he joins us now. Niall, we know the White House didn't openly support the Speaker's trip. So how bad are the optics of that? I was, I was shocked, I have to tell you, last week when the President said the military is worried. He's the Commander-in-Chief. He tells the military what to do, whether or not the Speaker should go. They are working hand-in-glove here in Washington, the two top Democrats. What's going on? It was a very peculiar moment, for sure, Vic, and very unusual yeah. to see President Biden and Speaker Pelosi at uh, crosswise like that. They rarely do that. There are rarely those kind of tensions between them. I take yeah. your point as well. It's very odd for President Biden to talk about the fact that the military don't want the third person in line to the presidency to go. And um, that's not really the military's decision, quite candidly. That is a decision that is rightfully made by Speaker Pelosi, just as it would be if President Biden himself wanted to go. Yeah, I, I had the same thought. And, you know, we should note that Nancy Pelosi, she's from San Francisco, large Asian American community there. She's been a longtime champion of human rights in China, uh, before, even when she was a backbencher. Now, on the politics, it's a tough call for some Republicans. Uh, they have to choose between defending Pelosi and defending the, the PRC, the People's Republic of China. What's in their calculation? Their calculation, I think, is that it would, on a macro level, show too much weakness for Nancy Pelosi to back out of this trip. A number of Republicans, even Mitch McConnell, the Senate minority leader, have suggested that doing that would be to, to in effect, cede a veto to the Chinese about mm -hmm. where... American politicians, including those of the most senior rank, go. Now, it is true that someone like, say, Mitch McConnell or many of the other Republicans you mentioned do not normally align themselves with Nancy Pelosi, to say the very least. But yeah. this is a different issue. And I think the point you raised at the start of that question is really important. As early as 1991, Nancy Pelosi, then a, a, a backbench congresswoman was in Tiananmen Square unveiling a yeah. banner supporting the democracy protesters who had been in many cases killed just two years before. She has a very long and rather uh, hawkish, for want of a better term, track record on this okay. issue. Yeah, it, it's remarkable, uh, really, that sometimes it takes an external enemy to overcome the internal divisions that we have here in Washington uh, between Republicans and Democrats. Niall, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.